This is the second part of a series in the previous video. We actually demonstrated how to mark uh, the origin of the subclavian. This is the green circles here and the origin of the uh, aorta. You can see that they moved here because we actually update the fusion based upon the angiogram to make sure it's absolutely accurate. Uh, that means we don't need to show other angiograms. We can just tee directly off these marks. Other things can be helpful in fusion. I mean, it's a pacemaker and making sure there's fusion, you can actually use things like these implanted devices. This is a Cook Zenith Alpha. Uh, you can see we put in a pre-curved Lundequist wire. It could probably be in just a little bit further, uh, maybe a little bit better. Uh, pigtail marker cathode's already up there. And we are positioning uh, the proximal end of the endograph flush with the subclavian order. You can see it's been positioned uh, right there. Uh, so once we've got it in position, we're going to shoot an arteriogram just to absolutely confirm. Obviously, we want to be as far proximal as possible. Uh, we've already done that before we moved the fusion marks. And now we're actually starting to uh, pin the device. You can see obviously it's still tethered proximally. And now we're deploying uh, this device. Uh, once the device is deployed, of course, you're going to release the proximal attachment system. <coughs> um, and then we're going to go ahead and balloon the, the device. You can see embolization occurring in transcranial Doppler monitoring as the proximal end of the device is deployed. Um, it lasts for several heartbeats. Uh, now the uh, nose cone is being recaptured. There's no embolization. Well, there's a little bit of embolization occurring, uh, you know, even as we recapture this. We're only monitoring the left hemisphere in this particular situation. So this is the uh, left MCA, which is being monitored. The delivery system, of course, is then going to be removed. And once we've done that, now the reason these fusion marks move is because we're moving the image intensifier. You can see at the bottom end, um, we've also marked the aorta, the celiac, and the SMA. Uh, in theory, if you're uh, orthogonal directly across the aorta, it should be a horizontal line. And the device is then going to be um, removed and the second device is going to be in place. <clears throat> now you can see if you're looking at the TCD, no evidence of embolization at all. Um, what we're looking for is the origin of the celiac. We're puffing this patient elevated creatinine. We're trying to minimize it. That's why the fusion marks are really important. And we're going to deploy right at the top end of the uh, celiac. You can just see it flashing really in the background there. Mm -hmm. So the primary device is going to be removed. Secondary device is going to be brought in, in place. Again, at this point, no evidence of embolization. Second device is now going to be brought up into place. At this point in time, all you really need to know is where the bone, and this video, by the way, has been speeded up a little bit. We're not quite as aggressive as this in moving these devices. Uh, try and, and get all this entire case moved up about 300%. Here you can see that the uh, gray pusher rod's a little short of the device, and usually bring that up into position. So we're going to bring the bottom end of the device down to where we want to deploy the graph. <coughs> Here we're laying a little bit short, don't need to be down quite, it's all the way down to celiac. Second device has been deployed. Delivery system is going to be recaptured. <clears throat> it's being removed. This patient, by the way, did have a uh, spinal drain placed preoperatively. Here's the third piece uh, plan, three piece, uh, ended up being four pieces. And now you're actually going to see where the origin of the celiac is, all stenotic. Now we get a better view of it. And this is an REO position, that's all determined preoperatively and how we're going to deploy this.
Again, all you really care at this point in time is the bottom end. You need to know what the celiac origin is, and you just really need to focus on that as you stabilize the gray and withdraw the sheath to allow the device to be deployed. Coming down a little bit, you're really continuously adjusting this. It tends to be pushed down. Here you can see the device being deployed. Again, the whole video has been speeded up just a little bit. And the nice thing about this graph is it deploys very accurately. <laughs> Once again, the delivery system is being removed. And we're going to balloon it and come back up and do an angiogram. Here's the angiogram at the bottom end showing the COX still flowing. No evidence of retrograde flow, type 1B. Now we're back basing in steep left anterior oblique. You can see that the Lundquist come back a little bit, pigtail's been put in position, and we're still basically at tight 1A end of leak at the top end. So you're always watching that wire because it does tend to come back. And you can see when you inject die you can actually see evidence of embolization it's really just that's why it's so important to know what you're doing inside the chest versus what's going on inside the head so we're repositioning the Lundquist wire optimizing the proximal uh, landing zone and we opted to go ahead and extend this a little bit further so here we're being pretty aggressive on the subclavian artery and all we really need to know here is the subclavian origin is and that the fusion marks are correct. Again, no real embolization. This is probably gaseous. Uh, maybe some gaseous sense, really just contrasted, just seeing. And we mag up and aggressively uh, deploy that device. <clears throat> So starting a little bit further forward than usual. Now we can see the covered part of the graft. We're putting it right on, that's beautiful, right on the subclavian. Still may have come back a little bit. Mm. And you've got to remember at this point in time that pigtail was trapped between these two grafts when you come to take it out. So now we've released the, the attachment system, removed the device, Now it looks better, although it's still maybe leaking a little bit. So your options then are just go ahead and balloon it, do a crud subclaving bypass or extend it. And so here we're bringing up Coda balloon, fairly aggressive with that, balloon it up nicely. We'll blow up all, all the overlap zones along the entire length of the graft. Interesting, when you're doing TCD, you can sometimes see flow acceleration inside the head as you're blowing this up. So it's one of the things that's often not even discussed is the fact that um, flow acceleration inside the brain could be associated with intracranial hemorrhage. Of course, proglides have been inserted in both groins preoperatively. Our pigtail has been repositioned when you remove it from being trapped between the proximal endographs, generally straighten over a wire, pull it down below the last endograph that's deployed, and then re advance the pigtail. 
his videos by and large have been ex uh, accelerated by about 300%, in other words, three times baseline. And now there's not any evidence of an end of it. In general, when you've got long segment coverage, like any thoracic endograph, we like to wake the patient up in the operating room, have them move the legs. It's the one opportunity you've got to go back in and change something. Thank you very much for watching this.